Hey everyone, Tesla Tom. Thanks for joining us on episode 8 of You'll Never Charge Alone, our special coronavirus vlog here on Ludicrous Feed. Well, today I thought we'd go through my latest power bill from AGL, my electricity company. And uh, just a reminder, we've got 8.4 kilowatts of solar on our roof. We've got a set of uh, older panels and newer panels. The older panels, 3 kilowatts. Uh, we've had them since 2013, so seven years now. Uh, and they're northeast facing, which is um, kind of the ideal orientation for solar panels here in Sydney. And then we've got uh, newer panels, which I installed um, uh, one year ago. A combination of northeast facing and northwest facing. And together they make up 8.4 kilowatts. And we've got uh, the old 3 kilowatt system on one phase and the newer 5.4 kilowatt system on a second phase. We've also got a Tesla Powerwall 2 battery. 13.5 kilowatt hours of capacity. Let's go through the bill right now. This electricity bill is from the 10th of November 2019 to the 7th of February 2020, a period of 90 days, which is pretty much summer in, in Sydney, Australia. If you look at the uh, usage here, uh, 1.5 kilowatt hours of electricity from the grid per day compared to 4.37 kilowatt hours per day, same time last year. That's really good, that's like one third of the usage thanks to the new solar panels obviously capturing more sun in summer. Uh, the bill was only $31.15 and reduced to $25.03 uh, if we paid on time but by the 1st of April. We also have two electric cars, two Teslas, one Model 3, one Model S. So this bill includes charging both electric cars. Uh, this bill doesn't show up but we normally use about 19 to 20 kilowatt hours per day excluding the electric cars um, and I've done a calculation on how much we use and I uh, made a note of that on a previous video if you'd like to check that out. So if you look at the other homes in my area and this is provided by um, the Australian Energy Regulator with uh, based on homes with a pool during summer we used 135 kilowatt hours in that time which is far less than a one person home in this area which I gotta say that's pretty awesome. I'm quite happy with that. And there's a graph as well showing cost and usage. And you'll see obviously in the winter period that between May and August, September, that's when we use the most electricity and that's when it costs us the most as well. Uh, you'll see the best months of the year are actually uh, flanking that winter period, that uh, March, April when it's autumn. And then that November, October, November period when it's uh, starting to get warm around spring. Spring and autumn is they're good periods because we don't generally use generally don't use much heating or cooling during that time so um, you know we can walk around without needing extra heating or cooling hence the decreased requirement for energy outside of what we already have on our roof and the battery and as you get into summer so January February we start using a bit more air conditioning uh, and the fans and all that so that graph makes sense let's uh, break this down for you guys so uh, uh, I'm on an electric car plan which is not uh, available anymore unfortunately this sort of was a little bonus for uh, early adopters when I first got my Model S um, Tesla had a deal with AGL where it was pretty much one dollar per day um, it allowed you to charge as much as you want and now that we've got both cars it's even better you can charge both cars as much as you want and um, for a dollar a day we um, I charge on my car model s about 13 kilowatt hours i'm yet to do the maths on this one uh this model 3 here but i think it's about six or seven kilowatt hours on top of that so you know in excess of 20 kilowatt hours extra for only a dollar a day so we're, we're saving a lot of money there uh, and uh yeah this that plan is separately metered uh to the car charger hence all that we see here is uh the dollar a day billing we don't actually see the usage on this unless i go out to the meter and record it myself all right, so um, let's have a look at the bill now. So for this bill, uh, I'm on a time of use plan. So I'm on peak, off peak, shoulder, and something called controlled load, which is like a cheap uh, period of time where our hot water used to be hooked up to this. Uh, we no longer have the hot water hooked up to controlled load. It's now just using electricity from the solar panels. So essentially we get hot water that's charged by the sun during the day. You'll see the prices vary here. Peak is 53 cents. Now that is stupidly expensive obviously but as you can see we barely use peak so what you see there is basically uh, you'll see that the, the power or two or the gateway just calibrating and that's you know that's just what the color gateway does um, you know as it's 
as you're trying to net meter how much electricity to give back or to pull in that's that's kind of the usage for the 90 days which is only 4.6 kilowatt hours uh, at a price of $2.51 for 90 days so I'm not too fussed by that it's almost negligible uh, peak period is between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. on a weekday off peak is between um, 7 and 2 p.m. in the morning and then uh, 8 to 10 p.m. in the evening so flanking either side of that peak period during the weekday and and then every other hour between 7 and uh, 7 and 10 p.m. on a weekend all right and then every other hour between that so 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. every day is off peak and the prices do vary obviously so 53 cents for peak shoulder is sorry off peak is 15 cents or 14.95 cents uh, shoulder is 22.95 cents so I would say the majority of grid usage, if we're going to use the grid, is during off-peak times, and that's not by coincidence. We do try to use things like the dishwasher, uh, anything that you know we can put off, we will uh, until after hours, till 10 p.m. And so, you know, 90 kilowatt hours, um, $13.49, and then shoulder is um, is only nine dollars worth. We only use 40 kilowatt hours. So yeah, um, you know, for um, for for a power two system with solar i'm pretty happy with that we don't really use much from the grid and uh, anything that we don't charge the power two with gets exported back to the grid so we've exported 1781.385 kilowatt hours in 90 days with a feed-in tariff of, t of 10 so 181 dollars uh, credited from that and then the electric car charges a dollar a day like i said um so yeah, I mean, you know, some people might say, well, why is your tariff so low? There are other plans out there. And I know there is an AGL plan that was 20 cents for a while, which is pretty good. But if I were to relinquish this electric car plan and move somewhere else, it doesn't actually work out better for me financially. So I've done the maths many times and the electric car plan is still the best plan to be on with two Teslas in the garage for now. There are other plans out there and I've done videos on things like PowerShop and even uh, AGL's new uh, electric car plan. This one still is the best one for me right now for the household. So yeah, uh, $31 discount of $5 if I paid on time, which I did. So $25.03 for the bill of summer 2019-2020. Alright guys, well that is, um, that's the power bill. Um, thanks for bearing me there while I dissected that for you. Just a quick update on COVID-19 cases again. Uh, Australia is reaching almost 6,000 cases now. As of 6 a.m. this morning, 8th of April 2020, uh, 112 cases confirmed within the last 24 hours in that time. So the cases are stabilizing. So they're not, I mean, we're still growing, don't get me wrong, but it's not growing high every day. It's growing by the same level. What we want to see is obviously the numbers coming down and down, down. Hopefully by, you know, we'll hit, hit zero one day. Um, so 45 have died according to the WhatsApp account, but I think there's been 50 from what I've read from the news just, um, just recently. Uh, 313,000 tests, which is good. Number of tests are coming down too. Whether it's because the people are less symptomatic or people just aren't getting tested, hard to know. But yeah, hopefully we can keep those test numbers up. What we really want to see is obviously the, um, is two things. Either want to see a vaccine, uh, or... We want to see an antibody test and that's an antibody test let me explain it's it's like an immunity immunity test so um if you get a vaccination or you want to know your vaccination status for work or whatever you can get an antibody test for say measles mumps rubella chicken pox and they'll give you two readings amongst others but two main readings which is igm and igg antibody igm antibody suggests that you've got a current infection and igg antibody suggests that you've either been infected in the past or you've had a vaccination. So an antibody test would be ideal for COVID-19. I don't know how fast we can create that, but there are certainly tests around the world, companies around the world trying to create that test. That's almost as good as a vaccine because if you want to go back to work, which is essentially what we want to do to get the economy going again and to feed your family, you want an antibody test. You want to be IgG positive, which means that you've had the test, or you've had the infection, sorry, uh, and you are no longer symptomatic and you will assume won't get it again we don't know for sure whether COVID infects someone twice but just judging from other viral illnesses you generally don't get the same strain twice so if you've got IgG positive you mean that means you've had the test you can't infect someone else 
you're good to go, symptomatic, asymptomatic, you can go back to work. And if we can test people with that antibody test, then that'd be great. We can get, a, you can get like a significant portion of the population who've had the illness back to work and look after those who haven't had the infection yet. Of course, the vaccine is the gold standard. We get the vaccine out there, then we will be good to go. Everyone can get the jab and then we can go back to work. Um, the downside of that is, how long have we known about the common cold now? We've known about that for years, um, and there's still no vaccine for the common cold. Similarly with HIV, there's no vaccine for HIV yet. Um, that worries me a little bit. You know, obviously companies are working around the world uh, to try and get that out there, but there are a lot of illnesses still without vaccines out there. Uh, and the race is against the clock, obviously, to get a coronavirus or COVID-19 vaccine. Well, I'll uh, keep reading and keep you informed, of course. And uh, just a quick update on my Powerball 2, as always. So, looking at yesterday's stats, yesterday was the 7th of April. Um, it was a reasonable day, 20.4 kilowatt hours. It was somewhat overcast. There was one brief spike of sunshine in the morning, but other than that, uh, it uh, only reached 20.4 kilowatt hours. And in terms of usage, 19.9 kilowatt hours. Like That's pretty much bang on average for the home. As I've said before, um, we only used 0.1 kilowatt hours from the grid, which is perfect. And again, that's with the calibration. Like I said before, the gateway does that to try and net meter. Uh, and then we exported 0.2. Understandable, given that we didn't get much from the sun. All right, guys. Well, that is it for episode eight. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to leave a comment. Um, love to hear your thoughts on my power bill. And uh, tell me what you... Uh, how'd you, how you went too with your power bill over, over the summer. And uh, if you're thinking about buying power wall tool or installing solar, so let me your thoughts, and I'm sure I, a lot of people out there would love to uh, help you out, or I can certainly help you out as well. And I'm going to leave you now with a bit of fun. Um, this is a video from uh, a bit of fun I had with my son on the Xbox. Forza Horizon 3 has a Tesla Model S, which you can configure and race. And this is him configuring a Model S for your enjoyment and entertainment. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, stay safe. We never charge alone. Take care. All right, we're with Electric Heaven this morning and we are going to design a Tesla in uh, Forza Horizon 3 with a 10 second challenge, one minute challenge, and 10 minute challenge. Ten minutes. All right, the first step is to do the 10 second challenge. You ready, Evan? Yes. Ready, steady, go. Ten seconds, we basically have to design the colour of the body. Okay, let's do the one minute challenge. Alright, let's re Walk us through this reset the car. Okay, so one minute. Here we ready? Go. Um Okay, ready, steady, go. One minute challenge. One well, minute's always the most stressful. Okay, get those black. And save it this time. There you go. Get those black. Get those chrome. Chrome. There you go. Oh my gosh, this takes forever. Ten seconds of time wasted. Upgrades. We'll just change the wheels. Have enough time. Those, those, those. Come on. Three seconds. Come on. That counts, right? That has to count. Yeah, that counts. Okay, so review. Um, all I did really was change the mirrors, um, add different wheels, and tint the windows. Cool. Okay. All right, you ready for the ten minutes? Minute ten minutes. All right.
Let me do a bit more in 10 minutes. I know. What I'll do is I'll fast forward the 10 minute challenge and then we'll review it. I'll do it. Walk us through what you did. So for the 10 minutes, I um, added a flake, like a purple flake. I kept the rims and I just painted them white. Um, chrome mirrors, black windows, black window tint, an attempted gradient at the back, and then slowly like fading in. Um, I'm not sure if the purple really looks good or not. Um, and I just maxed the, uh, the battery out, and I gave it some more camber, and lowered it. Yeah. Right, looks good. Should we uh, for a drive. take it out for a spin? Yeah. 